Hello there, everybody. How you doing? 2019, finally, we started the new year. So I really wanted to cover Parallax Effect because a lot of people requested it. But I didn't want to do the usual Parallax Effect that you see when you scroll down the page like goes up like this. And I didn't want to do that because I really don't think that's good UX. Uh, it's confusing for the users. So I thought of a cool idea of how to implement parallax effect. So this is what I came up with. So when we scroll down like this, we're going to have a page here that says about me. And then you can have some text or separate sections. And when you scroll down, you're going to see that that page sticks there and then it keeps going like this. So you can have another section like, let's say, projects, and then you can do this as well. So what this ends up doing is we have the parallax effect, but we're still keeping the page flow. So you know you're scrolling and everything is clear. So rather than having like a weird thing, like the whole page being parallaxed in some way, which can create some weird, uh, it just doesn't feel natural for the user. So this way, it's very simple. It's very easy to follow. You know what's happening on the page. And it's, come on, it's pretty It's pretty cool. <laughs> so let's get this started. I, I need to cover how we're going to build up this layout first. And then we're going to get on how to actually do this effect. And as you can see, I just added a header here with a H1 of Parallax. And I just added some basic styling. So we have like a introductory page and then we can get into the layout that we're going to build. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's see. So I want you to go to your HTML here and we're going to create a section here, which I'm going to be naming about, about, just about. All right. So this is our about page. And here I'm going to create the about title, which is going to be the one that's sticking. So the parallax layer. Uh, so that's going to be about title. So inventive today. There we go. And here we're just going to add a H2 and we're going to name it about me. Just like that. Good. So this is all we need here. Now we're going to create a separate div where we're going to place each individual section. All right, so the three pages that are being scrolled. So for that, we're going to just create a class. So if you do dot, you can do about pages, which is going to create a div with the class of about pages. Good. And here I'm just going to create three generic divs. For real site, obviously, <laughs> just add classes to this. Don't make them this generic. So actually, let me delete these two and I'm going to copy paste them because I want to add some random content in here. So I'm just going to add a not H1. Let's do a H2 or something. H2. We're going to say project one. And let's also add some P tag here. We're going to say lorem 50. And now we're going to copy paste this just so we have some content showing up on the screen. Good. All right. So we have our divs and that's actually all we need. I'm going to add a footer here at the end and I'm just going to say pretty cool, right? No. <laughs> all right. Save this. This is all the HTML we need. Again, if you want to do more, I definitely recommend because I believe it looks cooler. You know, you do about pages, then you do project pages, and then you just have the left sides always sticking there. and the flow is going to be really cool. So let's get into our CSS here and I'm actually going to pull this up. All right. So what we're going to need here is we're going to select the about section. All right. So the whole section, we're going to add a height of 300 VH because I want each individual page to be 100 VH. So basically three pages going down like this. So first of all, I'm going to add the section. Uh, 300 VH and then I'm going to display this flex. So what we're displaying here flex is basically this div and the pages. All right. So where the title is the parallax effect and the rest of the pages which are going to be scrolled. All right. Good. So this is what we have right now. So here we're going to select the about title. All right. So the parallax effect and I'm going to add a width of 50% just so it's split like this. Is it about title? 
Yeah, it's about title. Good. About title. We're gonna add a width of 50. Let's add a height. This is gonna be 100 VH. So the size of our screen here. Good. Then we're also gonna add. Let's select the about pages as well. About pages. We're gonna add a width of 50% to this as well. All right. So both are 50%, just like that. All right. So we have the split screen here. Now here I'm going to add display flex on our title just so I can center this nicely. Justify content center. And there we go. It's going to do it horizontally and align item center is going to do it vertically. Good. Nice. All right. So what else do we need to do? Well, let's make this a bit bigger actually. Font fam family font size. We're going to say 30 pixels just like that. All right, now this is not gonna look that great on small screen, but but it's good. It's good enough. Good. All right, now what I actually wanna do is select all the divs that we have inside this about page here, and we're gonna make it 100 VH each page. All right, so at the end, we're gonna arrive to 300. So to do that, let me just do this really quick. I'm just gonna select about pages div, Again, in a real project, probably use classes for this as well for each uh, individual section because you might need to do more work rather than just adding a H1 and a paragraph here. But this is an example, okay? So we're gonna add a height of 100 VH, which is gonna create this. Good. Then we're gonna add display flex to this again. We're gonna say flex direction column. And then we're just gonna say justify content space around and align items center. So we have some space in between each. Looking good. All right. So now what I wanna do is actually, I'm just gonna modify this a bit. Again, this is optional. I just wanna kind of add, uh, make the width smaller here on the paragraphs. So I'm going to select all the P's in here and I'm going to add a width of 80% like this. I'm going to add a font size of 18 pixels and just some line height here. Let's go 30. All right. Let's full screen this a bit. Let's see how this looks. Pull it here. All right. Not, not too bad. <laughs> not too horrible. Right. Let's also add some, uh, Let's make this also a bit bigger. Actually, that's quite big. I think we're gonna keep it that, that way. All right, let's keep it that way. Um, let's add some background colors to each section here. And I'm gonna do some trickery again here. So background page is div, and I'm just gonna select end child. And if I say one, that's gonna select the first div inside here. So this one, and then we can just do two, three, and just add some background colors to each. So I'm gonna say background color. I did RGB 56, 134, 89 for this one. It's gonna give us that beautiful green color. All right, there we go. Nice. Um, let's also change the color in these to white. So we're gonna say color white. There we go. Let's copy paste this one. Three, and there we go. We have three separate pages with three colors. All right, so this is our layout right now. But the problem is, well, nothing is happening so far. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the layout. Let's also add the footer here. And we're gonna say add a height of 100 VH. We're gonna say display flex, justify content center, align items center. And we have this last page as well down here. Let's add a background color. Let's get creative. Let's see what we have here. Beige, azure, bisque. All right, let's go for bisque. I've never used bisque before. This is bisque, bisque, French. Ooh, all right, not too bad. Wouldn't use this, but <laughs> it's okay. All right, so. We have our layout built. So how do we achieve this effect? All right, so what we need to do is I've created a app.js here. 
which is currently empty. So what we need to do is go all the way down here and link it. So we're going to say script, we're going to say source app.js, save this. And now we're going to use something called scroll magic, which is going to help us easily pin uh, specific containers on our page, easily manipulate and create a lot of scroll effects. So what we need to do here is if we go, if you write on Google, I believe is CDN scroll magic, and it's going to be the first link here. So you're going to click on that and it's going to take you here. And we're going to get this one here. So the last one, it's going to say 2.06 scroll magic min. So we're going to copy that up here. We're going to put a script tag again. And for the source, we're going to put this in. And another thing that we can use is something called debug indicators.min.js. So you can copy this as well. This is just going to show us quite easy on how to uh, what 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 is actually going on with this scroll magic. So this is kind of just is going to help us. Um, it's indicators. Okay. <laughs> so make sure to actually place this below our scroll magic. If you're going to place this above, it's not going to work. So we're going to have scroll magic, the indicators, and then our app.js. Here, we can create a function called, um, let's just say, split scroll, scroll, okay, like this. And here, we're going to initialize everything that we have. So here, down here, we can call this function like this, just so we're a bit more organized here. And here, we're going to create something called controller. And we're going to say const controller is equal to new scroll magic dot controller. So what this is going to do is, well, we're going to create something that's called scenes. So different scenes that we want to scroll and animate, and then we can hook it up to this controller. So this basically just handles all these scroll scrolls on our page. All right. So everything we're going to create here, we're just going to have to hook it up to this controller and then everything is just going to work magically. So here we can down here, we can find something called new scroll magic dot scene. And we're going to add this and then we're going to add this. And here we can define some properties. So we can define something called duration, which is how long our scrolling is going to last. For now, let's just do duration. We're going to say, let's just say 100, that's 500, okay? So this is going to be 500 pixels actually. Now we can define something called a trigger element, element, uh, which is basically what's going to trigger our scroll. So in our case, what, uh, Thing that's going to trigger our scroll is the about title. All right. So as soon as we reach to our about title, we want the scrolling to take effect. So to do that, all we have to do is say dot. Okay. Because it's a class and we're going to say about title. Good. Let's save this. And down here outside, we can do dot. And then let's just add indicators which is again, just some visual that we can see, which I'm going to show you in one second. And then we need to hook it up to this controller. So to do that, all we have to do is say, add to controller and then save this. Let's see what we have here. All right. So as you can see the indicators, so this add indicators here, just adds these indicators which says trigger all right so as soon as it reaches to start that's when it's going to trigger so now it's going to trigger so that's all it's doing good so what else do we have here add to controller just initiates everything duration is going to be 500 pixels and the trigger element is obviously going to be here however we really don't want to trigger this as soon as we hit it here we kind of want to trigger it when it hits it here. So all the way down here. Now, how do we do that? How do we modify this trigger position? Well, we can do that by defining something here called trigger hook, which if we say one, it's going to be all the way down here. If I can write correctly, save. 
So this is going to be all the way down here. So as soon as we scroll a bit, it triggers. However, what we want is zero, which is going to place it all the way up here. So zero is going to be all the way up here and one is going to be all the way down here. I think default was 0 0.5, which is in the middle. However, now if we scroll down, it's going to hit right here. So this is where it, when it's going to take effect. Now, rather than, well, before we go on, let's actually make this pin here because it's not pinning right now. So to pin this, all we need to do is below our, below or above, it doesn't really matter of our add indicators, we can just say dot set pin and we can just add this class again about title. And if we save, you're going to see that as soon as we hit this point, it's going to stick there. Now there are problems with this, as you can see. Here is the end, by the way, because we defined 500 pixels. We're going to change that as well. But as you can see, there's a weird problem right now that our thing actually disappears here. And this is because if we look with F12 here, I don't know why it does this, but scroll magic basically adds a additional div across our about title here. So it wraps it around this container when we add this new scene and it adds this margin auto to it. As you can see here, position relative margin auto. So it basically pushes down our content there in the middle, which if we scroll down, you can see it's right here. Now, a simple, super simple workaround is to just overwrite that scroll magic uh, margin. And to do that, all we have to do is scroll up here to our about title and just add a margin of zero important just to make sure that we remove that. So now, as you can see, it's still here. So it doesn't add that margin auto. And when we hit this point here, it's going to add position fix to this. So it's always going to be stuck here. So it works perfectly. And all we need to do now is to extend this endpoint not by pixels because screen sizes might change and everything, but we can actually define percentages here. So if, if we do 100% uh, here and make sure to wrap it in quotes, save, then it's going to start here and it's going to go all the way down here, 100%. Now we actually want 200%, so we want it to end here. And then these two things are going to flow together. So if we do 200%, then we can scroll, 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 and it's going to end here. And it's just going to come all together very nicely like that. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you very, very much for watching again. And I'll see you very soon. Please also drop a subscribe and let's get this year going. I'm super excited. All right. Take care, everyone. Peace.